Good morning, everyone. Um, I think we're ready to get started. Uh, I'm really excited to kick off this webinar. I, I don't get to do this very often, uh, but I am going to actually kick off uh, today, do the introductions and uh, give a little bit of an initial part of the presentation. Uh, so I'm really excited. So today's webinar is how to leverage IDP, Intelligent Document Processing, in your digital transformation. Uh, this is a powerful new AI solution presented by ProcessMaker, and, uh, and I'm really excited to, to tell you what we've got for you today. So in case, um, so on today's webinar, you've, you've got myself. I am Brian Reel. I'm the founder and CEO of ProcessMaker. I am really excited to be joined by a couple of my colleagues. Uh, Vim Van Dam, who is, has just joined ProcessMaker as part of an announcement that I'm going to explain in a moment. He is our VP of Sales for IDP Technology. Richard Smith, uh, VP of Technology for IDP. And we've also got a special, uh, a special guest, Scott Foster uh, from Cassis, a customer uh, and product specialist at Cassis working with the IDP technology. Uh, we're also gonna be joined by Peter DeWitt, uh, product manager for IDP technology now from, for ProcessMaker. So for those of you who missed it, we made an announcement a few weeks ago, which is a really, really exciting announcement for ProcessMaker. And the announcement was that ProcessMaker has joined forces with a company in the Netherlands called Docular. So this was an acquisition by ProcessMaker of, uh, of Docular, which is both a company and a technology. Uh, Docular is a, is a company that has been developing an intelligent document processing solution for some time, uh, has a true A-list of, of customers, uh, mostly in the Netherlands, some in the UK, uh, and has a, a technology that we found very complementary to ProcessMaker for uh, a number of, uh, of important reasons, which I'll go into in a moment. So this is our first webinar as a joint team. We've been very busy over the last few weeks uh, integrating the two companies. Uh, and as I'll, I'll talk about in a moment, this integration makes a lot of sense uh, for, uh, for us and we believe for you, our customers and, uh, and potentially new customers that, that want to see these two technologies work together. So uh, for those of you who aren't uh, so familiar with ProcessMaker or might be new to us or just need a bit of a refresher, uh, ProcessMaker is a, a company which until now had really just specialized in digital process automation. Now we're joining digital process automation and intelligent document processing. We have uh, over 400 customers in 52 different countries, so quite global. Uh, we're processing more than 50 million uh, cases a year. A case would be an iteration through a process. So if that is a bank that's doing account opening uh, processes, that would be an account opening. Or if it was a loan origination process, it would be a loan originated. Or if it's a purchase request for a finance department, it would be a purchase request. We also are a, a company that really uh, has true open a true open source component and true open source roots. Uh, ProcessMaker has an open source core. Our open source has been downloaded more than 2 million times around the globe. Uh, we are, well, we were about 180 employees. Now with the combined entities, we're uh, about 200 employees. We have about 3 million users across our, uh, across our customer base. And we've been in business for more than 20 years, uh, 22 years to be exact. And as you'll see, we have uh, offices in the US, a couple offices in Latin America, an office in India, and an office in the Netherlands as well. So why IDP? Why intelligent document processing? Why does this make so much sense for, uh, for ProcessMaker? So let me go through some of those reasons. First, first off, it's really a natural extension for our customer base and the verticals we serve. Uh, ProcessMaker has developed core solutions in a number of verticals. Uh, we've done a lot in the last few years in banking. Uh, we have more than 50 banks globally using the ProcessMaker solution. And in the last couple of years, we began developing a, a true 
end-to-end -end solution for account opening, both at the commercial and, uh, and uh, retail level, uh, mostly focused on mid-market banks in the U.S., uh, that complements what we're doing with international banks around the globe that are using us for hundreds of different processes. So that's one of the verticals. We've gone very deep in, in the banking and finance vertical. Higher education is another place where we have uh, a very strong concentration of customers, more than 200 universities now automating um, hundreds of different processes on process maker everything from declaring a major to requesting a grade change to transferring a credit uh, to handling back office finance uh, processes uh, another strong vertical for us is manufacturing uh, so these tend to be customers that are are uh, using process maker alongside their core ERPs like SAP and others. Uh, and then OEM, uh, we've been embedded in a number of, of uh, other software companies that want to make sure that they're using the absolute best in uh, business process management technology, in workflow technology. So they've taken our core application and embedded that workflow uh, engine inside their system, be it a, an ERP, a document management system, a CRM system, or some other type of enterprise system. Workflow is always a part of those systems, and many companies find that they need a specialized workflow system. So uh, IDP was really an extension uh, of this. It works well in each of those verticals. We recognize uh, that customers have data that's trapped in documents and they want to be able to extract that, that, the, those, that metadata and put it to use in processes. So really it's documents that are coming in the form of emails, in the form of PDF documents, where they might be structured or they might be unstructured, but there's data in those documents that can help us in our processes. And that goes, uh, that runs the gamut of those uh, core verticals. So that was one reason. Uh, secondly, um, Docular, we looked at a lot of different IDP technology and Docular was by far the best. It was extremely well built. Um, kudos to, to Richard and the team he has built uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, they're really developing first-rate technology, um, a beautiful interface. It's a low-code interface so that customers can also address different use cases in their organization. And we really felt it was uh, a perfect fit with ProcessMaker. Thirdly, this idea of unlocking business value from data. Uh, so ProcessMaker is all about uh, improving the way processes are run, improving efficiency across processes, improving the end-to-end -end SLA or service level agreement that can be delivered to a customer. And we can't do that without the data that's flowing through the process. And a lot of that data is trapped in documents. So think about an account opening process where business documents get uploaded. We need to know who's on those business documents, when they were signed, if they're still valid, all sorts of things. And those are usually trapped in PDFs. We want to be able to get that data out of the PDFs. We want to do it in a way that is not the way some of the older OCR companies used to do this, if you're familiar with that term, where you have to develop uh, specifically, say, where data is located on a document and that that's what you want to capture. That ends up being very brittle. Intelligent document processing is exactly the opposite. It learns patterns, and based on these patterns, it can figure out what data it's looking for, even if there's slight variations or quite a lot of variations in uh, in the formats that this data is coming in. So think about pay slips from companies. They're not all the same, but the data we want to capture is the same. Um, the processes tend to uh, focus on high volumes. So we're, we're uploading lots of documents, and those tend to be the processes that we're focusing on in digital process automation. Again, if it's a, an account opening or a loan or um, a request, a change request of some type, Process maker tends to handle these things at scale, and IDP also works well at scale. Um, it's a great way to kickstart processes. Maybe a document is the first thing that we receive. We want to get the data out of the documents. We want to push it into a process and go forward. Um, finally, the, the types of processes that we saw that Docular had been working on were mission-critical processes. Um, uh, Docular, in its customer list, has the largest retail client in the Netherlands, has large financial institutions. Uh, these are, are, are companies that are looking at mission-critical processes. They have 
problems with those processes and the, the, the data that's trapped in the documents. And that complements what Process Maker is doing. Our mission is to automate complex, unique, complex business processes. If it's not unique, it's probably already automated in an off the shelf piece of software. And if it's not mission critical, we don't believe we're going to de deliver enough value. So we're really looking to solve mission critical processes for our, our customers. Uh, these will reduce uh, costs for customers, reduce errors, increase ability of our customers to be compliant with uh, regulatory requirements, and basically reduce and get rid of the sort of manual tasks that people are doing. So we talk about that swivel chair task of entering data that's that we receive from one piece of information, again, a potentially a document into a process, that's what we're trying to eliminate. So the problem, uh, as we mentioned, is this: there's an explosion of data uh, that's trapped in documents. There's high costs associated with not accessing that data. Uh, customers are spending too much time searching for data inefficiently. Uh, that's one of the big problems. Manual tasks are more of a problem now than they ever were before. There's a massive labor shortage, as we all know. Um, there's also a, a much greater rotation of employees in businesses. And so things that can be automated and there are menial tasks that people didn't want to do really in the first place anyway, they need to be automated. The other thing is just errors. People make errors. Machines will make a lot less errors once they're trained uh, to, to find the data we're looking for. And finally, uh, there's, there's risks. If, if this is a compliance issue, um, which in many cases, many customers, it is a compliance issue. You know, one of the customers that we're dealing with, it has to make sure that the final report it emits is, is consistent with the data it originally ingested. And it wants to compare that data because a mistake there could be millions of dollars in fines. So those are just a few of the reasons where it really makes sense for us. So the product, as you'll see today um, from our IDP specialists, it digitizes, so it does what, uh, what the history of kind of, uh, of, of pulling data out of documents would do. We can convert images uh, into machine readable data, so data that can be pulled out. We can classify documents so we know what type of document has uh, been uploaded without having somebody open the documents to figure out, was that a tax return? Was that a business license document? Or was that an ID card uploaded? We can do that all automatically. We know that a number of our banking clients are struggling with that today. Extracting the data, we wanna be able to extract the data. So a lot of times that involves image correction and then, then it does involve some level of OCR. Once we've identified the data, we wanna be able to extract it. Uh, and then we also want to be able to store and search it. So one of the wonderful things about our IDP product is that it also has storage capabilities and a, an incredibly powerful search capability. So enabling people to take advantage of the, of the information that's come out of those documents. And finally, before I hand it over to one of our, uh, one of the, our next colleagues, uh, these are the customers that are currently using our IDP solution. So these are, as you'll recognize, um, tier one A-list names, uh, A-Hold, the largest retailer in the Netherlands, KPN, uh, the largest telecommunications company in the Netherlands, uh, ANWB, Cassis um, from uh, Bank Agricole, Agricole uh, another company. Uh, so really a top top tier customers, the Ministry of Justice, which has more than 500 uh, million documents that it's processed through our IDP solution. So this is a tried and proven solution, and you'll learn more about it in the next uh, in the next 30 or 40 minutes. So with that, I will hand it over uh, to my colleague. I believe um, Vim is going to be speaking next. Good morning. My name is Wim van Dam and I'm the VP of Sales for Process Maker IDP. During the next 25 minutes, we will be explaining you more about the Process Maker IDP product. We will also show you three short live demos that highlight how Process Maker IDP fits in various business scenarios. Let me start by explaining how we position our solution. With Process Maker IDP, we focus on unstructured documents that occur in your business processes and require a significant amount of manual labor to process them. We provide the latest AI and machine learning technologies that will allow you to fully automate these tedious and time-consuming tasks. 
With our technology, your documents can be classified automatically and find, extract, and validate valuable data. So what do we actually mean by processing unstructured documents? Let me explain with some examples. Imagine the vast amount of documents you receive via different channels. Before you know what to do with them, or in which business process they belong, you would need to know what kind of document it is and what it is about. Instead of an employee performing that task manually, process maker IDP can identify the document type automatically and tag it with relevant topics, so it can be sent to the right process directly. Another example is the processing of a form, for example an application form for a loan. Instead of looking up relevant data in the form and enter them manually in the associated business application, process maker IDP can read your form and take over most of your time consuming data entry work. Another great use case of process maker IDP is in KYC, where people spend a lot of time reviewing documents and ensuring that the customer dossier is compliant and complete. With our AI engine, we automatically detect all documents in the dossier and verify its completeness. If GDPR is a concern to you, our product helps you to manage your data according to legislation. With our pre-trained models, process maker IDP looks up and identifies personal and confidential information on the fly and will mask it for you. Do you have a large amount of documents stored in different silos, file shares and archives, and has it become impossible to gain inside manually? Process maker IDP can automatically crawl all your documents, classify and index them, and apply rules to identify risks and opportunities. And finally, with ProcessMaker IDP, the average time of 18 minutes for workers to find the documents they need is history. All documents are classified and fully indexed for easy retrieval and future use. Instantly. So what do we mean with unstructured documents? Unstructured documents are everywhere, and in fact more than 80% of all content used by employees in your organizations is unstructured. Even the presentation you are currently looking at is an example of an unstructured document. Unstructured data comes in many different formats. An example is a physical letter you receive or an email with attachments. Other examples include PDF documents, text files, various image formats such as JPEG or PNG, and a wide range of common office document formats. In addition, there are hundreds of different document types which are required and processed in business processes. Some well-known and often used types include application forms, a bank statement, passport or ID card, utility bill, invoices, receipts, payslips, and different types of contracts. Depending on your business process, there can be many more and other types. The Process Maker IDP product consists of three building blocks. The first block is the digit digitization engine, also known as OCR or optical character recognition. This is where documents are prepared for further processing by converting all images with text to machine readable data. Process Maker OCR supports over 100 languages and delivers up to 99% accuracy. And because we have this cap capability built in a product, there is no need to invest in a separate OCR package. The second block is the heart of Process Maker IDP and contains the AI engine with various algorithms and pre trained models for classification and extraction. The last block is our built in document management system that comes with complete and robust DMS ca capabilities to store and manage your documents. And it comes with outstanding search capabilities and rich features for full text, metadata, filtering, and much more. Now let's take a more detailed look at the document flow when processing it with uh, Process Maker IDP. On the input side, we support a wide variety of formats, just as the types mentioned in the previous slides. We have no restrictions to the type of documents that you would like to process. As long as we can capture the knowledge of your expert users, Process Maker IDP can do the job. We provide different options to add your documents for processing. We provide a rich user interface for the business user, but also an API for automated ingestion by business applications or processes. In addition, we can automatically load documents from file shares, email boxes, and FTP. And of course, we integrate well with Process Maker BPM. The first step in the process is important because it's responsible for creating accurate data for further processing by the AI engine. The OCR engine checks if there is machine readable text available and will validate it if the quality is sufficient. And before it converts images to machine readable data, 
it optimizes the image quality with various algorithms to ensure 99% accuracy. In the classification step, the AI engine automatically determines the document type based on its content. And in addition, it is also able to identify subcategories and to tag your documents with topics to describe what it is about. The extraction step is where the AI engine finds and reads the data you need for your business processes. Such data elements include numbers, dates, names, locations, form value, and much, much more. The masking step is where ProcessMaker IDP supports your GDPR requirements by automatically identifying personal data and masking them. In the search step, we create a full text index of all your documents, enabling the strong built-in search capabilities. This allows you to find and retrieve documents based on the content, metadata, advanced filtering, and more. On the output side, we also provide various options, in addition to the business user's interface, to use the data collected by ProcessMaker IDP in your business processes. Most commonly used output formats include JSON or other text formats. Available integration options are via our APIs and ProcessMaker BPM. The knowledge that drives our advanced AI engine is not static. ProcessMaker IDP supports, just like a human, continuous learning using an interactive feedback loop that captures your expert's knowledge. Every action performed by the AI engine comes with an accuracy score. When the score drops below a configurable threshold, for example because of a new document type or a change in business process, the document will be put aside for review by a business user. The business user will validate and, if needed, correct the outcome. This action is then added back to the training data and will automatically be included when retraining the classification model. In this way, you are sure that the AI engine is always up to date and using the most accurate classification model driven by the business user. The next thing we would like to do is to show you how the application looks like and how it works. We will do that with three short demos based on example use cases. The first use case is about automated document classification and verification. Imagine a KYC challenge in a customer onboarding process. For that, the customer must provide a mandatory set of documents. A user will have to verify those documents manually and needs to check if all required documents are available and valid. On average, more than 50% of such processes are not first at the right time and have to be returned to the customer, often two times or more. The result of this is that roughly 40% of all requests cannot be processed completely the same day. Your employees spend a significant amount of time waiting for and correcting data. So how does ProcessMaker IDP help? ProcessMaker IDP automatically identifies your document types and is able to verify if all mandatory documents are available. And because it is trained by expert users, it reads and extracts data like a human and is able to check for errors. In order to streamline an optimized process and customer experience, ProcessMaker will provide direct feedback if data is incorrect and will automatically send notifications and reminders. Now let's see a demo. Yeah, so what we will show uh, right now is uh, the case uh, which is linked to uh, onboarding uh, clients. Um, I will show uh, three spe specific uh, things. The first is how we uh, classify the files, a part, a part, a part of the case. Uh, the second one is uh, about uh, how to uh, extract and val validate a passport. Uh, and the last one is what we call uh, so-called cross-document uh, do val validation which is uh, all about to uh, use uh, values extracted from uh, the files and how to share that uh, between them. So I, I will start uh, with uh, creating a folder where I put, put, put in all the files uh, for this uh, specific use case. I will call the folder onboarding. Here it is. Uh, next, I will drop in uh, some files which I 
prepared up front. Uh, I have a complete set of three files. The first one, uh, which you see at the right of my screen, is an employee uh, file with quite some uh, text. Uh, I have a copy of a passport of the involved client, uh, which is actually a scan. Uh, and I also have a pay slip of, for that uh, specific person. Let's now drop it into uh, the newly created folder and we can go on with this. Yeah, so in the, 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 this specific screen, I have the option uh, to, uh, to provide some extra info, which I will not uh, do. So we will uh, now start. Uh, actually, now all the files uh, which were locally uh, here stored are uploaded are in the tool, um, the processing will start, which means that for uh, so, some of them, uh, uh, the OCR will uh, be done, which means that an image is con converted to, uh, to text. Uh, right now, let's see uh, what is happening. Yeah, so I, I open the first uh, file and you see the file uh, in, in our built-in uh, viewer. Within the viewer, you can scroll down through uh, a file. You can uh, zoom in, you can zoom out. You have all kinds of options. Um, next step is, of course, to see uh, what the outcome is of the the processing steps. Uh, for that, I go to the uh, right side. Uh, and I will open my panel and then we can see the results. Yeah, so here at the right, uh, we see a, a long li list of attributes. Uh, fir first one I want to point out is uh, the type. So, I, IDP here uh, may mention that uh, the type of the file is uh, an, an, an employee file, which is actually uh, right. And below you see the, uh, the, the score attached uh, to that, which is actually a, a score which tell, tell, tells about how con confident it is about uh, the, 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 this type. You can see that the score is pre pretty high. So it's quite uh, sure about this. Yeah, B below you see some more uh, attribute values, uh, which we will not uh, die, 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 dive into right now, but I will switch back to the other two files we had. Uh, we also had a, a had a file like this, which is actually a, a pay a pay slip. So if I look now again at the right side of my screen and I uh, zoom in into to the values extracted, then uh, again here you can see that the type is correct again, and it also has a score with, which is also quite uh, quite good. Now uh, we have a specific uh, case, uh, which is actually the, the passport provided, which I will open right now. Uh, zoom, zoom a bit in, and you can see it's a scan, what, what you see often with, with some, some blur, blurry background also. Uh, yeah, the scan is not uh correctly straight but yeah th those are all steps we we can deal with uh so looking now again at the fields at the right it has uh, seen that it is uh indeed a passport and below you see quite some values which it has extracted from the this uh, specific uh, file uh uh, some of them I want to mention, like, uh, for instance, the uh, expiration date, which can be used to val val validate if uh, the passport of, of the, this spe specific per person is still valid. Uh, others are uh, names. Uh, 
but there is a bit uh, more. You also see uh, a field called valid checksum. Uh, this check, this checksum is actually used to validate if all the information extracted is uh, correctly uh, cap captured. Uh, so with the value true, it means that all is uh, correctly obtained from this, uh, this file. So we had uh, three files, but we still don't know if, uh, if the, the set is uh, fully uh, there. So what I can do next is to have a look at the outcome of uh, the case. So if I go again to the I, I icon, I see actually uh, what the outcome is. So I provided three uh, files, uh, but it says that uh, for this particular uh, client case, it's not uh, fu fully there. Um, looking specifically at the findings below, you can see that uh, there is a form uh, mi 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 missing. So in the, the rules, uh, we want, want, wanted actually to have uh, four files, uh, which would also include a loan form. Um, and it also has found a nice thing uh, in the sense that the name it found of the firm where the employee works is uh, not exactly the same uh, for the employee file provided uh, related to the name uh, mentioned on the payslip. So some more examples uh, you could uh, see here is, for instance, uh, the fact that uh, our do do document is not valid an uh, anymore. You could also see here that, uh, for instance, the names involved on all the uh, files provided are not the same, or for instance, our bir 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 birthday is not the same. So yeah, it it's uh, ju just an example. Uh, then back to Wim for case uh, two. I will, we will switch the screens. Thank you, Richard. Um, yeah, so use case two is about uh, manual data entry, uh, or rather said eliminating it. Um, now let's take the process of a loan application. Um, a standard requirement for this is that the customer uh, should provide proof of income uh, using a recent payslip. The user would then review this payslip, look at the relevant data fields, and enter them manually in the business application. A typical challenge, however, is that payslips come in manually out, and the content of it is hardly consistent. It makes a tedious and time-consuming task with the risk of errors. Uh, in fact, employees spend 80% of their time finding the right data and manual data entry. So how can we help with this process? First of all, process maker IDP does not use templates or fixed positions to find data. It purely works with the available text data and applies AI to identify key values. So you don't have to add new templates when there is a new page slip layout. Process maker IDP can also mask and highlight uh, all key data fields so that it supports the business user with visual validation options. And instead of manual data entry, our APIs will send the extracted and normalized data to your business applications automatically for further processing. Now let's see, that, let's see how that looks like. Richard. Uh, so we will create actually a new uh, folder for the next case. Uh, let's call them base slips. And also for that case, I prepared some uh, nice examples which are quite uh, real life ones. Um, so let me add uh, those two examples. Uh, you can see uh, again at the right of my screen uh, what this file uh, looks like. So it's a slip where you see some in in info about the uh, M employee and at the end also the spe specific amount uh, paid. Um, 
The second one uh, you see has a complete other uh, look and feel. Uh, the attributes uh, on this uh, slip are uh, for sure not as the same uh, lo lo looking at the name names of the labels. Um, also here, of course, you have an amount uh, paid. So let's add th those two files and also here, we will see what it uh, will bring us. And um, so at the processing side, we first uh, check what the file is of which type. And depending on the type, we extract uh, some uh, key val values. In this uh, particular case, it are uh, the name of the, the, of the employee, uh, the, the birth date, the social security number, and at the end, the net uh, pay, paid amount. So let, let's open uh, the files. So uh, first again, we see that it, it is actually uh, seen, seen as, a, as a type of a pay slip file. We also see the score. But uh, right below, we see some, some extra val values like the name. Uh, we see, uh, for instance, the social security number. We see the bir birthday of the employee and the net weights. Uh, let's go to the second one. Then we can see that it is uh, it has a complete uh, other look and feel uh, names are not at the same position uh, v values are not the same like uh, for instance if you look at the the birth date uh, you see also that that it, it has not the same uh, format like it had on the uh, other one but uh, we can still uh, deal uh, with that. So also here, if I open it, uh, you will see those values and uh, you will see that they are uh, there. Now also, we can also combine them with uh, the val values extracted and where they are uh, ac actually obtained from. So if I... Uh, go to the, this func function and I say I want to uh, visualize this, I get them uh, on my screen. And so I can see that the name is, uh, is in blue. I can see the date here in orange. Uh, you see also, or you, you can't actually see, 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 see it blurred out in the, the, this specific case is the social, Secure security number, uh, which can be uh, handy for privacy uh, reasons. And of course, we can also uh, make sure that the, the, this file can, can be export, 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 exported. So um, below, you see the net weight. Uh, over to uh, Wim for the last uh, case. So our last demo focuses on the area of conflict management and discovery. Um, over 50% of workers spend more time uh, looking for information instead of actually using it. Uh, and in fact, it will take them an average of 18 minutes to find a document or contract they're looking for. Another challenge comes in when, you, when your archive grows and contracts are stored across multiple silos or locations. It becomes impossible to browse manually through these contracts to find data and hidden value. It gets harder and harder to identify clauses, to find, um, to find clauses or to find contracts with missing clauses. Due to this, the risk uh, caused by anomalies increases. So how does this work in Process Maker IDP? Process Maker IDP comes with strong building search capabilities, uh, which will index the full content of your documents, provide metadata search, advanced filtering, and comprehensive search queries. And it is lightning fast. Even with thousands or millions of documents, you will get instant results. Let's see a contract in progress across this maker IDP. Indeed, let's do that. Uh, let's go back. 
So the last case uh, which we present here is indeed about uh, how to deal with uh, those employee files, contracts. Looking at the time, I will uh, go a bit uh, more into our search uh, features, uh, which we haven't seen at the other one. Uh, of course, you are known that we can extract uh, values from those files. So I will uh, speed up a bit. So I added uh, two files uh, looking in the viewer. Uh, those are uh, two, two scans. So in the background, they are OCR and uh, some uh, val 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 values are uh, obtained uh, from them. So looking actually at the right side panel, I get the values in the meantime. Uh, now you see a good score, you see uh, the employee uh, file there, you see some uh, va values extracted like uh, start date, end date, but also we had a look at the clauses par part of the these files. So here you see a full uh, li 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 list of clauses it uh, found in, in, in those uh, uh, files. So let's switch now to the option uh, called uh, search. Yeah, you, you can find your files uh, store, store, stored here back uh, via uh, browsing through folders, which works well, but not if you have a uh, thousand of, of files in folders. So um, if I go to uh, search, I have quite advanced options uh, there. Let's first... Uh, have a view on this uh, screen. So uh, at the left side of the screen, you see some fill, fill filters, like uh, for instance, we, we can filter on a type, like for instance, if I want, want to see all the invoices uh, stored, I can filter easily. So I have some, some more here. Um, at the right side of my screen, you see uh, the outcome of the, the search. We have some options uh, like a row view, uh, a grid view. I can also perform a search uh, quite in depth. Like for instance, I want to see uh, all the files where the name Jeff is in. And I want one want to do actually an uh, what what we call an exact uh, search. So when I open the file, you will also see it uh, marked where where it found uh, Jeff. Now uh, back to the search, we can also do some uh, nicer things. Like uh, for instance, we could find all the uh, files of a specific uh, type. Like for instance, we only want to see uh, the uh, the employee files uh, who have a fig fixed type. So here, here I have them back. Uh, we could do uh, a bit more. For instance, we could also say, I want to search uh, on a specific clause. So I want to uh, see a clause like, for instance, an amendment clause. This will, yeah, I know. Now it's bad, 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 better, but uh, I can also say, okay, but not uh, a clause uh, about illness. So now I get uh, only one hit. So when I open the file, we can also show at the right that indeed uh, it contains a clause about amendment, but not about the illness. Uh, yeah, we, we offer loads of more options. You can uh, do a full tag search, uh, search on all val values extracted. You can uh, define your own fil fil filters, uh, la like for, for instance, on, uh, on, on a date range. So if you want to see all the files, created this year, or you want to see all the files where uh, the amount uh, mentioned is below a specific value. Those are the things you can do uh, quite e easily. Uh, looking at the time, I would say we switch now to uh, Scott. 
Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Scott Foster, uh, I'm part of Cassis uh, UK, which is an assets global asset servicing organization, um, part of the Credit Agricole and Santander family. Um, pleasure to be here today, and many thanks for the invitation to, to share our story and to share our use case of how we have worked with DocuLayer in the past and how it helps us um, with some of our mission critical products, as, uh, as Brian put it earlier. And so, conscious of the time as well, I have a hard stop at uh, uh, at the hour. So uh, if we could move on to the next slide, please, I'll, I'll go whiz through these slides quite quickly. So this is a high level overview of um, Cassis and who we are, as I say, and as I mentioned, we are an asset servicing organization, a global custodian, um, where we uh, are jointly owned by Credit Agricole and Santander. And we're a growing security services provider uh, within um, the industry. And we have a real emphasis on sustainability. And we have a real emphasis on supporting our clients with helping them get access to all of their um, insightful um, investment data on all of their portfolios, whether it be on a pension fund side or on their funds, whether it be on the, on the asset management side as well. So a full uh, range of client types um, that we service uh, as a part of the Credit Agricole, Santander, and Cassis group. So if we move on to the next slide, please. Um, we'll talk about the UK mission specifically. Um, as I mentioned, I'm a part of the products team. I'm the head of digital and governance services at Cassis UK. And we've really developed a strong um, product called Cost Transparency and Benchmarking, where we help over 400 billion worth of pension fund assets better understand their costs and charges of running their pension schemes. But in order to do this work and to fulfill this product, uh, we really have to build out a strong and wide network of asset management clients, and as well as that collect large volumes of data from these asset managers um, to fulfill the cost transparency reporting requirements um, that our clients are requesting from us. And the challenge we face as an organization was as we were growing uh, exponentially from uh, you know one pension scheme with with 3 billion in assets to now you know over 60 pension schemes with with over 400 billion is how do we process larger volumes of files with the same data uh, accuracy and data quality which we sort of pride ourselves on and uh, the, the classic question is, do we hire more people uh, to run the same process or do we automate some of the processes and make uh, the processes in which we run the product a bit more smarter? Uh, so that led us to a conversation with, uh, with DocuLayer. Uh, we have a Dutch heritage with a, a lot of uh, Dutch pension scheme clients uh, as, a part of, as a part of the family. And if we move on to the next slide, please. Um, the problem we were trying to solve, uh, as I've briefly described there, is essentially collecting a whole variety of different data formats in a, in a sort of unstructured way uh, and structuring that into a single kind of template that fits in line with what the regulator and what the industry standard is sort of looking for. And so for, for each investment mandate that a pension fund runs, we had to collect one template, which can, as I say, come in a wide variety variety of formats. Um, but the end output needs to be a, a template with 200 different columns. And so, as we're managing that, you know, across the whole our whole client base, we really needed to scale up quickly and use some smart processes to reduce manual error and to ensure that we had high data quality and accuracy. Uh, in our final output that we pass on um, to our clients. And so if we move on to the next slide, I, I believe there are some animations that are coming on this slide as well. Um, so how do we use uh, DocuLayer and how do we use um, the tools that are now available through, uh, through Process Maker? Uh, we essentially are using uh, one of their key products, which allows us to onboard all of our asset manager contacts. Uh, to give them a notification to submit uh, data at a certain date by a certain deadline and um, in, a, in a certain format as well. And that whole process of uh, basically kicking off a project uh, and managing the nudges of, of, of submissions of data are all managed through the system. We, as the administration, um, 
sort of owners can have a top down view of the progress of these submissions and uh, make edits or changes to the parameters of each of the data submissions. Uh, I think point three then goes more into um, the, the clients themselves actually uploading that data and then to the system. And then within that system, we can smartly identify errors um, that have been uh, found within each of the data submissions and files that have been uploaded by our asset managers on behalf of these pension schemes. And so that gives our team, uh, our analyst team on the ground, the ability to essentially follow up with any uh, data issues or uh, data queries to make sure that they, that our clients and our asset manager uh, contacts can fulfill uh, the full template and ensure high data quality. And so I think one of the last points that we have um, on the slide is, yes, we're really talking about basically transforming unstructured data into a structured format and an output that our clients expect to see. And we aggregate all of that data up into sort of master sheet and then pass that data on to our clients uh, through dashboarding and through the raw, raw data sources itself. And the, the whole um, process maker docular tool really allows us to automate that client onboarding process, the data uh, upload and data querying process. And it frees up the time of our analysts to work on more complicated tasks and comp complicated analysis uh, that then helps um, us better service our clients and add a better uh, client experience and better client value through the output, which is reporting and bring that data to life through an online dashboard in a, in a quick summary. So thank you very much. All right, thank you so much, Scott. Uh, next up, I'll introduce Peter. Uh, if you can join us for a few minutes, I know we're running a bit over time today. Yeah, I'll keep it short. Um, thank you very much. I'm Peter De Witt, product manager at uh, Process Maker IDP. Yeah, so um, how can we help you? We can help you organization with, with uh, simplicity of our product. And the simplicity of our product comes from the default configuration that we offer, from pre-trained models that we use. So you can start really soon out of the box with out of the box features. Uh, most features can be able to buy system administrators. So you don't need specialists or consultants to kick off. Um, for um, the business user, they can use their knowledge of, of the document uh, while uploading, but also while correcting predicted labels. So if they correct a the label, uh, we'll use that information, that knowledge to um, improve further or newer predictions for other documents as well. And we have uh, the pipeline with OCR, which uh, automatically extracts the text that the AI features use so they can do their magic. We don't need any user interaction for classification or entity recognition. <clears throat> Next slide, please. So for the OCR part, eh, uh, where we can help your organization with these unique features, OCR supports 125 languages and language variants, including dialects like uh, and vertical text like Japanese. Uh, we can extract tables from documents. And as shown by Richard, we also extract information from ID cards or passports. Um, to use this for validating the files or find that nearly expired document. Um, with the uh, barcode and OCR recognition, we can uh, easily enter data. Um, uh, for example, the Dutch uh, driving license has a QR code on the backside, which contains the license number. So you don't have to register that one in an application. We can scan it, we can process it. And um, the last one, we, we validate uh, the text layer that's on a document. So if it's bad or bad quality or corrupt, we can create a new text layer so the user can copy text from the new file. Uh, yeah, speaking about text uh, information extraction, um, <clears throat> we do that via three different ways. Um, the text-based classification, that it's uh, classifying documents for, for example, document type or topics in a document, and other applications uh, could be uh, predicting the responsible department for the document, or the sentiment of the text in the document. We use pre-trained models to recognize entities in documents, for example, uh, personal names, company names, dates, locations, etc. Uh, we extract those entities and we can, for example, determine the confidence level of a document. Uh, with the powerful and customizable scripts from the IDP script library, we can extract all the information. Um, we also can filter and validate and calculate 
uh, other data. So how does that help your organization? Well, we can automate those decisions in workflows to speed up your processes. Um, using data from the document could also prevent user mistakes. As they have, don't have to enter the data manually, we extract it for them. Uh, we can use the information to generate tasks based on the document's content or update uh, metadata in a document storage system. Um, of course, like Scott mentioned, we can gain more insight by sending that extracted information to a data warehouse. And um, last but not least, uh, we can actually improve the document by adding the text layer or converting it to a secure PDF. Uh, what's next? Well, the upcoming months we'll be working on getting the most out of Process Maker by improving the integration. And we'll get more out of the box AI features um, by uh, adding more pre trained models for specific target groups. So you don't have to do any training. In case of uh, custom trained models, we want to implement AutoML, which picks the best algorithm for a given data set. This leads to even better results in labeling your documents. Furthermore, we'll extend the current entity recognition feature with support for another 88 languages. Thank you very much. Back to you, Brian. Well, thanks, everybody. This was, um, uh, I think we covered a lot today. So I know we're over time. Uh, we will stay on and answer some questions for anybody else who wants to stay on. I do see a couple, uh, a couple questions in here. Um, the first question from Stanley is, are the text searches case sensitive and or insensitive? It's ac actually what you want. So we uh, support both. Okay, great. Um, if you have any other questions, please do uh, type them in the uh, in the in the bar. Um, one from Fernando. Do you have any healthcare examples you can share? Um, perhaps you can send some use use cases uh, after the after the webinar. So that one we can handle after the the, the person had to drop. So they want to see some specific healthcare use cases. So yeah, we can we can forward those along. Yeah. Does the system perform semantic analysis? Uh, yes, it does. We use uh, natural lang language uh, processing. Uh, yeah. Great. Um, I don't see any other any other questions in the uh, in the chat. Um, so again, feel free to reach out uh, via mail, email, uh, and we'll be happy to answer any other additional questions. This is the first of of many webinars we'll be doing uh, on this subject. And uh, and your if you're a current client, we we look forward to speaking to you with the, with your account manager to see if there's if you have any needs for this technology in your organization. Um, and uh, we look forward to, to speaking more about it. Uh, one, one last question here. Does the system only read type text or can it read handwritten text? It can uh, do both. So, so, so it can and also you use uh, hand, hand, hand written text, but uh, in practice, you will see that the accuracy with that is uh, lower often. Okay. Um, a couple more questions. Does the platform have multilingual support for extraction? Uh, yeah, yes, we have. Yeah, uh, for extraction, depending on the type you choose, we have have up to one hundred twenty one uh, la languages. Okay. Um, and what about with Google Workspace documents? C uh, can we work with Google Workspace documents? uh yes we can extract uh, val val values from from that uh the viewer right now can't uh, show show them but we can uh, still process those uh, files okay we have another question here around rpa do we do rpa in addition to idp um i, I can answer that one so we don't do rpa per se we do work with partners who do rpa um, so if you're looking to do something with data that's been extracted that that process maker doesn't do, we have a number of partners we can recommend for that. 
Uh, another question, is this an on-premise or cloud solution? Uh, both, actually. We have both uh, cloud and on-prem on, on -prem clients uh, with, with this. Yeah, so the next question relates to that as well. So I think that is an important point. This solution is available both in the cloud or on-premise. So if you want all of your data on-premise, that is not a problem. Uh, we, we do implement it on-premise. Exactly. Um, are there document keywords? Is there a document keyword dictionary, for example, in French versus US? Uh, I think is the question here. Uh, depends on what you want to do with that. If it's specifically for a uh, search like uh, stop stop words, uh, you can define them. Yeah. If it's more like for extraction, uh, then uh, we have some uh, pre-trained models uh, which contain, of course, uh, text. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Rodwan, we're happy to speak to you afterwards about about what you what you exactly mean by that question. Um, anything else here? I think that um, he said for search extraction. So, yeah, I mean we can we can search and extract in any language. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, I think that's about it. Uh, if other questions come up, again, feel free to send them to us um, and, uh, and we'll be happy to answer them. So just want to thank everybody for participating uh, and staying with us. Hopefully you're as excited as we are about this uh, new addition to, to Process Maker and, and what we can now do with these solutions. So we look forward to speaking to each of you in the future. Thanks again, everyone. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.